what's up guys Apple fanatic and today I have a tutorial on the different types of kernels and what each one means when it comes to a droid device um, each device runs on the Linux kernel so um, each Android device runs on the Linux kernel and an iOS device runs on a Darwin, Darwin kernel which I will be touching upon in a different tutorial but today's will be on uh, Android and each Android operating system runs on a specific kernel. Now, um, I'm not going to touch upon those so much because if you don't root your device, you can't change what kernel that runs on. However, once you get take the plunge into rooting a I, um, onto your device or your devices, if you have more than one, you will be greeted with the community of kernel changing, um, which basically means you can take out or flash one kernel for a different kernel whether it's a more secure kernel or a kernel that runs more smooth or one that is overclocked or underclocked or you have the ability to overclock or you have the ability to undervolt or overvolt um, and I will touch upon what those um, things mean so the um, first one I want to talk about is overclocking it is the most common type people are always asking how I overclock um, and let's before I divulge into that I just want to show you a really good website for any of you Android lovers out there XDA developers. These guys are basically, um, it's not as closed sourced as the, the dev team. Um, so there's not a set new users. You can't go on their website and follow them on their Twitter. But the XDA developers or the XDA forums are people that don't get paid, but they just love to program and met, frick around, screw around with um, Android devices and the kernels and the ROMs and everything else like that. And this is the website you're going to want to go to if you have any questions that I did not answer or you're in the mood for flashing a custom kernel. First thing I like want to talk about, like I said, overclocking. Um, overclocking is taking your processor, so uh, my Droid Incredible is overclocked to 1.1, like I said earlier, um, and making it run above its capacity uh, or its designated speed. Um, you do this by rooting your device and then oftentimes installing a kernel that is specifically made to overclock. There are many kernels. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I'll put a list in the description of a couple of kernels. Um, kernels are tough to choose because there's so many kernels out there and they do so many different things and you have to make sure you have it platform right, phone right. If you flash a Droid X kernel that was meant for a Droid Incredible or that's meant for the Droid X and you flash it on a Droid Incredible, you'll break your device or at the very least you'll have to restore your operating system and that's just a pain in the butt to do. Um, so like I said, just pay attention to what you're doing. But overclocking is, like I said, the ability to make your device run faster than it does. Like 1.1 to 1.0, you're not, not going to notice a difference. Um, maybe if you run a quadrant standard test, you will. But 9 times out of 10, processes are going to be the same. But if you're running on a Droid 2 or a Droid X or really a Droid that's running a processor that's more open that hasn't been locked as much and that hasn't, not locked, but hasn't been, it's not as constrained, you'll be able to overclock your device to 1.4, 1.5, even 1.6 gigahertz at some points. And, you know, from one, that's almost a half a gigahertz faster. It's 500 megahertz faster than your phone was designed to run. You'll notice considerable battery drain. You'll notice considerable battery loss, uh, processor life loss, but your device will fly. You run it against a quadrant standard, um, and it's they're relatively. Um, you'll notice a huge bump. Let me finish my train of thought. Um, you'll notice a huge bump in speed, but they are and they're relatively. Um, when you get into those specific um, processors, they're relatively stable. You can push the limits and try for two gigahertz, one point eight, one point nine. Then you might run into a process, um, some issues where your processor won't necessarily blow. I mean, if you have it running at 2.6, 2.8, your processor will go poof. But 1.8, 1.9, your processor might not necessarily blow, but you might get stuck with your phone rebooting or it might just completely shut off and you might not be able to boot it up until you get rid of the kernel or you reinstall the operating system to the uh, original operating system's kernel. So that's pretty much what uh, overclocking is. It's the taking of the processor and making it do things, making it act more powerful than it was originally made to act. And oftentimes a company will make a processor that can easily run 1.4 or 1.5 gigahertz. However, because of the battery, they want to save battery. Apple does this all the time. 
their A4 could easily want, run 1.2, 1.3 gigahertz. But because they want the battery and they don't want it to die in seven hours, they underclock it. And you know, you take you take what you can get. You can unlock the. You can make it so it's overclocked, but you'll lose battery. And you can make it so it's underclocked, which I'll get into in a second, and you'll save battery. Um, so that's pretty much what overclocking is. If you have any questions, let me know. The next thing we're going to talk about. Let's see where we're at the time. The next thing we're going to talk about is underclocking. Underclocking is the ability to take your device's processor and make it run slower or um, make it run not as fast as the device it was meant to run. So you have, a, we'll use my Droid Incredible a lot for this analysis and my Droid Thunderbolt, which I ordered and it should be coming today. Um, well, I ordered it Saturday, so it'll be coming Monday or Tuesday, right in time before I leave Florida. Um, with the ability to underclock, what this does is it will dramatically improve your battery life. So if you have a device like the Drone Incredible that runs standard at 998 megahertz, which we'll call a gigahertz, it runs standard at a gigahertz, and you underclock to 600, 700 megahertz, you might not notice an everyday daily tasking, sending a text message, internet browsing, um, playing, you know, Angry Birds. You're not going to notice a huge difference in... Um, you know, usage, it's not going to be like, oh my god, my phone is so slow, where if you had it down like 340, 500 megahertz, you might notice it. But you're not going to notice something so drastically that you'll want to up, um, make it so it's faster or make it to a, a um, make it so it's at normal uh, clock speed. But it will save you an incredible amount of battery life. Um, for example, my Droid Incredible, when I know that I won't be home for a long time, so I leave at school. At, at I'll leave to go to school at seven, uh, battery one hundred percent charged, and I know I'll get home until ten or eleven that, that night. I will underclock my device, and I'll know for so I know that my device will make it through the day. Where if I'm coming home at three or four, I'll overclock the bitch, and it will run. It will run. It will make it through the day easily, but it will obviously kill the battery faster because it's using more processing speed. Um, overclocking is also good. If you, um, like I said, you want to save battery life, it's good for battery life. It's good if you just, you don't use your processor up to its full advantage. I recommend you update the process. I mean, up, up clock it. Um, it's not overclocking, but you make it go to its normal speed at least once a month. So the processor can run at that normal speed for a little while. Then you can underclock it. Underclocking it has the same effects as overclocking it. You're battery, I mean, your processor won't die as quickly, but underclocking, it still has negative effects because it's still making the processor run at a thing it's not supposed to run at. It's like taking a marker and filling it with too much ink. You know, it's going to run really, it's going to write really well, but there's going to be negative side effects. It's going to become blotchy or it's going to become too much, too, uh, it's a really bad analogy, but I'm just thinking that's out on the floor. Um, Touching a processor anyway, where it might not have negative effects up front, it will eventually have an effect on the processor. Um, the processor life between, like I said, anywhere between 700 and 1.15 gigahertz, it's not going to really affect the life of the processor because it's such a minuscule amount. 300 and 150, it's not going to be like, wow, my processor is going to die a year and a half early. No. Um, now, if you underclock to 200 megahertz, you'll notice processor death because your processor it's kind of hard to explain but my fr friend did it and his processor died in about six months same with the overclocking different person different friend different phone overclocked it last the phone lasted about a year the processor lasted about a year before it died and he had it at like 1.3 or 1.4 so underclocking is good to save battery it's also good if you don't use it for heavy gaming or you don't use it every day um at the phone, but you don't use every every day. You're not using. You're not running high strain um, programs in your phone. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is undervolting. Undervolting and underclocking are not the same at all. People oftentimes get them confused, saying underclocking is going to make my device slower. So so will undervolting. Undervolting does not necessarily make your device slower. The best way I like to think about it is underclocking has to do with processor speed. Undervolting has to do with the amount of undervolting has the amount to do with what's getting to the processor electri electronically. Undervolting, you know, volts. Um, it's, I, it's an analogy I guess I could use is you have a tunnel, and you have a thousand people running through that tunnel, 
and the only way to keep that tunnel open is if you have 800 people running through. Now, for some reason, there's a thousand people running through the tunnel, and you know nothing's going wrong with it. It's not going to over. It's not a, it explode. It's normal for a thousand people to run through the tunnel every day. But if you have 800 people running through the tunnel, nothing's going to go wrong. The tunnel's not going to shut down. It's not going to work any less. So what a company does, taking it back to the kernel now, is they take that thousand people and they make it so the kernel only needs is only running the bare minimum, which means that it's going to run fine, but it's not going to get as much power. It's not going to draw as much power. It's not going to make your phone as hot. So what's going to happen is you're going to notice a dramatic, dramatic increase in battery life, a dramatic increase in heat um, resistance. It's not going to get as hot. Now, that's being said, if you're running an overclocked kernel while it's under vaulted and you're doing a game graphic intense game, it's still going to be hot because it's, the processor is still running, but it won't get hot as quickly. Um, that being said, if you underclock your kernel, under vault your kernel too much, um, if you underclock it to say 500 runners where it needs at least 800, your phone won't turn on because your your vault you're not your processor is not getting enough to turn on, or it will turn on but it will all, it will shut off a lot or it will not run smoothly. It, you need it has to be a happy medium. You don't want too many things running through, and I'll talk about that. That's called over um, over vaulting, and you don't want a, too little running through. If you have too little running through, it won't turn on, and you'll have to redo the kernel. And if you have too much running through, you could potentially burst the kernel. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Typically, companies do an overage because you know it's just it's easy to do, and they don't have to really. They have it in a safe zone where they know that they're not even near enough to over over um, clock it. I mean, over vault it where it's anywhere near going to blow up. But at the same time, they know that they're not too far away. So like you have a thousand people running through the tunnel, you only need 800, nothing's going to happen. But um, if you need to, you can always take away the extra 200 people and it will save room, save battery life, save, um, like I said, save your hands from burning. And the final thing we're going to talk about, and I just touched upon briefly, is over vaulting. <clears throat> not many ROMs do it. Um, not many, it's not really needed, but occasionally you will get better performance out of it. Overvolting is the act of pushing more electricity in it than it's needed. So we'll go back to the tunnel analogy. You have a thousand people running through the tunnel at a normal day. You only need 800 for the tunnel to stay open. So one day there's a marathon running and you have 1,500 people running through the tunnel. All right. So 1,500 people running through that tunnel for that one day, it's not going to be a big deal. Now if you have 2,000 people or 3,000 people running through the tunnel at one day, for, in one day, it could potentially burst the tunnel which would be making your processor explode. If you are running, now I'm not saying that there's 3,000 milliamps going through your processor. I'm just saying, just as a broad general thing, if you have way too much running through, it's going to screw your device up and it could potentially kill, burn out your processor really quickly. But at the same thing, like I was saying, if you have 1,000 people running through an average, you have a marathon, you have 1,200, 1,300 people running through your tunnel for one or two days, you're not going to really notice a huge decrease in life. You'll notice a huge decrease in battery. You'll notice your, your processor is getting a lot hotter. But you, device life-wise, your, your device isn't going to suffer too much. But if you have 1,300, 1,400 people running through your tunnel at, um, for 10 months straight, your, device, your uh, tunnel is going to start becoming worn down. You know, it's not going to have upkeep. It needs, it's going to want to be, you're going to need maintenance on it. And I know this is an awful analogy, but it's just the easiest way I can think of to explain it. And eventually, it's just going to have to get shut down because it's just not usable anymore. So um, overclocking, I mean overvolting, see I spoke too soon or messed up, isn't bad if you don't do a lot. So your device currently has 1,000 people running through it. You overclock to 1,100, 1,150. You're not going to notice a big difference. I mean, you're not going to notice a decrease in bad life at all of anything. The battery will suck more. Your device will get hotter. But other than that, nothing's going to happen. But like I said, you start throwing people in there left and right until your your tunnel explodes. Then you're going to be screwed. So the best thing I can say about over vaulting is do it to what you know you're doing. Don't go over vaulting your device if you don't know what you're doing. Same applies to the under vaulting. 
uh, because in certain situations, if you overvote too much, your device won't shut off. It will just go. And I've seen it happen to a friend. He had his device for some reason. He had, he didn't know what he was doing. He was a noob. Yeah, I said noob. Um, and he had his device. He's had some phone. I don't even know what it was. It was overclocked, overvolted, and it just it had enough in the process. It was like you know what, screw you, and he blew up. Um, I'm sorry this video is so long, but I thought the only way to really touch upon this stuff is if I make the video longer than it needs to be. Um, don't tell me to shut up and stop talking because this is what you signed up for. I just want to say thanks to everyone. I hit a thousand views, hundred thousand views today. It's really helpful. Um, I'll be doing a giveaway soon for this momentous occasion. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, for Apple Fanatics, this is me saying peace and don't do anything stupid. If you have any questions, let me know. And if I can't help you, I will direct you to the XDA developers account and I will try to hook you up with someone. Because the last thing I want is for you to brick your new device, your new Thunderbolt, your Droid Incredible, or you know any Android because it's a great operating system and it's very customizable. But with that customizability becomes responsibility. So guys, hope you had fun and I'm giving you the peace sign.